that, you know, n- number one thing, we competed with them at, at a high level. And they're, they're a team that you would think that with so many new guys, they would not be connected, but they're probably the most connected team um, in our league. And O'Banner and Williams play like they've played together for 20 years. And, and you know, they're just, they're just bookends. And, and I just thought we did a great job of fighting, uh, making their catches tough. And Williams still gets 20. But uh, during the stretch where we needed to get stops, we got stops. Yeah, Coach Mike said that he kind of got some 2019 West Virginia vibes with the win today. Do you sense any of that with this team? I think the biggest thing is that we've consistently talked to him uh, about why have all these good practices and, and have this good camaraderie that we have on our team and have great work ethic and not finish things. And, um, you know, today we really challenged them about today being the day. It's a day game. It's the most fun games uh, that you can play in because you can go hang with your family, be with your friends, and you got the rest of the day to enjoy uh, the victory. So I think hopefully it's a springboard for our guys. But we have not been down mentally after we've lost. So there is a difference on that side of it because we've continuously been ready to play but not ready to finish. Chris, when the players were here, I asked them about this. Is what, what can you say about this team's resilience? You know, after you jump out of the big lead and then Texas Tech comes back, takes an eight-point lead, but then you guys respond and, and, and pull off this big victory. I think we've been responding all year to people's, you know, we, we hit people, they hit us back, and then we come back and really make the game uh, interesting and, and at the level where we can actually sneak some. Um, but I think the biggest thing today is that we finally had a not-today not, not approach about it, and I think – um, you know, Mike was huge in during that that segment where he hit, you know, a couple threes and um, he kind of got we were stagnant when they when they took the league and he came in and really, you know, provided some senior leadership and uh, and really helped us at that point. Um, you know, when you got the two little guys out there fighting like they did guarding, guarding bigger guys and really being just little menaces all over the court, I, I, I think that that really shocked them at times. And then I, I guess I'll just follow up because I asked Mike, you know, him having played here with, with Barry and X, uh, just how, how good in your mind is Marquise right now as an on-ball defender? He's, he's one of the better ones I've ever coached. You know, he, he can generate um, steals and generate extra possessions for us. Our thing with him is when you generate extra possessions, those have to be good possessions after the steal. Um, and valuing the ball after you make a spectacular defensive play is something he really concentrated on today. Um, and obviously, you know what happened at TCU. We can't we can't go back and change that, but we can change it moving forward. And he did, and that's credit to him. Coach, this was really the first game all season where you had a full roster and a full coaching staff out there. What can this do moving forward, and what is this team ceiling moving forward when fully healthy? But I think number one, I'm, I'm tired of talking to coach on the phone. You know, <laughs> I think that the best thing is that we're together now, so we can kind of. You know, it's not a every hang up and then well, one more thing, you know, it's 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 we can be as a group and our think tank is back together um, and our players are all together and, and we still are melting down physically. Uh, you know, the COVID guys and me and myself and the co- like we're still struggling. Shane tested, you know, positive five straight days in a row and just this morning tested negative. So um, just having the group back is important. But what was also important is the growing when everybody was apart. Um, you know, going to compete at West Virginia when we had, you know, the opportunity to win that game, um, you know, with very limited players, two guys on the coaching staff, one full-time coach, and to have the guys respond. So that, that lets you know they're, 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 what we're selling them, they're buying it. So now when we get them together, we got to continuously be, be at this level together. And then as a coaching staff, how do you get the guys? You, you, you talked about the buy-in, but as far as – to consistently day in and day out work, even after you have a, such a big win like this, how do you make sure that there's not a letdown for going into the next practice and the next game and so on? They've actually done it, you know, and it's been, you know, very fortunate because when you have, and we're still young, the sophomores are still the guys who we need to continuously grow for us to grow. Um, they've been great. You know, they know they haven't played up to their potential, but they've been great. And, and it's been consistently Marquise and his ish, you know, just being great human beings in the locker room because it's so easy to be a locker room lawyer right now and, and talk about the bad things. And those guys have really done a great job of focusing forward, 
you know, we just got here, but we know we've seen what this place is like. And, and so I think that's, that's really important for our guys to be that way. And then coach has always talked about trying to find a leader for this group. Um, it seems like where, where we sit, Marquise Noel seems to be one of those guys that's constantly on the floor, directing traffic, encouraging his teammates. Would you say that he's really developed into a leader in your locker room? I think so, because um, the number one thing with him is that when he came here, he didn't want to step on toes. You know, he really wanted to try to fit in and just be, you know, I'm going to be Nigel's backup. I'm good with that. And then it became, no, I'm going to play with him. <laughs> and we said, you're going to play with him. And, and I think that he is that guy. But, but Mark Smith's the other guy. Mark Smith is the, the emotional leader for us. Uh, Mark Smith is the guy. He's the tough guy. He makes all the hustle plays, the loose balls. That's why he's the lead rebounder in the league. And you wouldn't think that that guy would be the leading rebounder, but he is uh, just off effort, energy, enthusiasm. So, you know, the, the transfers have done a great job uh, with leadership with our team. Chris, what would you say was just the difference today over the last five minutes? Why do you think the team responded so much better? I think, number one, that we've, we've been there before. We've been there so many times. And, you know, I've been on them about you either dig a hole or draw a line. And we, we really focus, draw that line and, and hold that other team on the opposite side of that line. Too many times we've, we've dug a hole for ourselves and fallen in and can't get out of it. And, and today was the day that we actually um, – stayed on the right side of the ledger with a win and you know you got to overcome stuff like this if you're going to if you're going to grow as a team um we we've been talking about the process with them you can't skip it you can't jump it we would love to be three and two two and three you know four and one maybe but we're not we're one and four so now we have to build on that and we got to continue to show them a high level of confidence and that's the you know to coach weber's credit um kim continuously showing a lot of love to those dudes in the, in the, in their darkest hour, you know, when they struggled, when they missed layups, when they blown assignments and film. Um, but, you know, he made those guys all watch film, come in and, 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 and kind of do their own presentation. Um, and that's been great for our guys because Nigel Pack's not a talker. He's a scorer. He's a basketball player, but to make him talk helps everybody around to say, okay, we'll follow that guy too. We believe, you know, he knows what he's supposed to be talking about. And to make those guys do presentation was great for us. Uh, I also wanted, do you think Mike being a senior, super senior, having all the experience that he did, brought a calming effect to the lineup today? Today, he, he definitely did. You know, he was very calming. He came in, he hit threes. He, he, he did what he's supposed to do um, as, a, as a player in our system. And, you know, he's got a pedigree that he has to make, you know, and we taught him, we told him, you have, your pedigree has to show that you were with the real guys, you know, those championship guys, your pedigree has to show from here on out. And he came in our office the next day and he said, you know, 16 left, you know, and that was important that, that he, that he took it the right way and he took it to our team and told him how many we got left and we need to grow from there, from here. How much more, or I guess, how good do you think Nigel Pack has been this season and how much more potential do you think he has? I think he can be a lot better. You know, I think that, you know, he gets 14 and seven today. And the only play he wants to talk, talk to me about after the game is I should have dunked that, that, that uh, offensive rebound, you know, not, not some of the great rebounds he had, you know, like in the yeah. traffic and the, and the post defense against some of their big guys, uh, you know, he wants to dunk it, but I think he can grow. I think he can shoot it better. You know, I think he can shoot it better. He, he's, he's not used to the speed of everybody concentrating on him all the time. Um, and, and that's where he's got to grow. He's, the game's got to slow down for him, and, and it will, and it is. Um, because when, he, when, he can, when he's shooting it in a magic way, we're pretty good. And then Luke hit his first three since December 5th, I think it was. Um, Wichita. Yeah, Wichita State game. So, I mean, where he hit two of them. So how key is that for him and his confidence going It's forward? huge. Um, and I've told him every day, you know, you know, I mess with him, call him IP, you make all of them in practice. Now you got to start making some in the game. And, and, he, and, he, and he did today, and he took a big charge after that. So, you know, we need him to make those shots because he's always open. He, he does a good job of finding the spots to be open. And when you've been a score your whole career and you're not doing that, he's really struggled with it mentally. But hopefully today, get him going. Seems like the backcourt's been pretty solid all season. The front court's been coming along. Um, what is your take on the front court? Obviously, they played well enough to get the win today. Well, they know they have to get better. You know, and Davion's been through everything you can possibly go through. Um, now his body looks way better than beginning of the year. And he's coming around. He's being more physical. He's catching the ball better. Um, you know, I, I just think they take time. Those bigs take time. And we want him, 
good right now because of where everybody saw him at the end of last year. We want him back there immediately. And I think he knows that. But uh, they're a work in progress. But, the, you know, we have not quit on them. And we've really worked hard to gain their level of confidence as a player. And I thought Davion was great today defensively, despite how good Williams is. I thought he did some good things defensively for us on the ball screen stuff and keeping Kevin McCullough out of the paint as a helper and keeping all the, the drive stuff out of the paint. We did a great job with that today. And it started with him. Chris, did their uh, token pressure kind of uh, almost assist you guys to transition into offense? On, in the half court? I think so at times. They really, so when they did that, and a couple of times they tried to trap, they gave us wide open threes right away, right away and we hit both of them back to back on them. And then they, they stopped being aggressive in it. And um, it really it really helped us to really slow our guys down and to, and to be, you know, we talk about being mission focused every single play. And it really allowed us to, to concentrate um, after, after the, 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 the press, which was token, to really get set up and really run stuff. Um, and the beginning of the game, we did a great job with it. Then they hit us with, with a lot of Williams, and, you know, and, and he and he's good. He makes you change things offensively and defensively, how, how you do stuff. And were there any changes at halftime? How much did you guys play more efficiently in the second half on the offensive end? But we, we really, we told them, like, when we call something, just because they try to make, force you a different way, still execute it. And we did a great job of executing um, on the other side of the floor. So if they're forcing us left, we just moved, changed the side and ran it left. And I think that was really, really helpful to our guys just making the right play and the play that was in front of them instead of trying to fight the game and fight the pressure to run something the other way. Offensively, you seem especially early, you were more efficient, but it looked like you didn't settle for shots and maybe made the extra pass or the ball fake and and got a better shot. How how big is that for, for this offense? That was huge. And we've been talking about one more a lot with this team, one more pass, one more. And and we, we get on them when the person who's wide open doesn't scream one more. And we had a lot of one more yelling today than we've had, you know, in a really long time. And it showed the extra pass was there. Um, you know, Nigel was open a lot today and he and he's kicking himself by the ones he missed wide open um, on extra passes. And, and we got to continue to do that because when we do that and we play that way, it allows our defense to really set up and set in and really be really good at what we do. I want to ask about Selton. I mean, you got the win without him having his best game, but early in the season he played at a really high level. If he was able to get that, get that back in this conference play, what would that do for you? I think it does a lot because he still does what he does defensively, and that can't be overlooked. He still locks dudes up, and I think he doesn't get credit because the other dudes are more dynamic, and he's more of a businessman. He just goes about his business and does what he's supposed to do. We need him to quit passing shots up, and I think that's his biggest thing. You know, we keep telling him there's no more open than wide open. You, don't, you won't step out of bounds if you just shoot an open shot. And um, he's got to gain confidence in his in his jumper, and that's where it is with him. He's got to let it go, and, and you got to you got to, and he works at it. And that's the the thing. If he didn't work at it, we wouldn't be as adamant about him shooting wide open shots as we are. And then you know you got your whole team back, but you know another tough battle in Austin coming up in, with Texas. How are you going to motivate the team to stay focused and get another win down there? I think we we haven't had a focus issue. We've had a finishing issue. <laughs> So I think we're going to take this and, and, and hopefully grow from it. But I don't think we won't go there and compete. You know, I think we've been competing. I think that sometimes they don't understand why they're competing, and that's why it hasn't resulted in victories. And we've really asked them to turn their emotional ears off. Sometimes when, when things are in the, in the guts of the game and something happens, you can't be emotional about it. You know, you just got to go to the next play, and you have to really focus on what's the task at hand. I just wanted to ask, you know, just how how important was this win, if for no other reason, just not not just in the losing streak, but just the confidence of walking away and not having another close loss on the ledger? I mean, it, it was huge. You know, we coach has done a great job um, continuously motivating these guys to compete on a daily basis in practice and, and to show up in games. And even when we haven't been around, like it's been so hard. Um, to relay what we're trying to say and you're not in the building because you can't build a culture on Zoom. 
or over a voice or over the you know speakerphone. You can't. It's just not realistic. But you got to have your guy there, you know, and and just continuously him saying how it is, what it is, where it should be in front of him is is really important. And uh, it's huge for us. It was great for our guys. Um, it was great for the Purple Nation. We everybody needed it. We 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 all needed that victory, and it was good to get one. Texas Tech came off a week where they beat Kansas, they beat Baylor. Um, you guys played Texas, then you played Kansas and Baylor. Just how big of a win was it for the guys today, if no other reason, just to know that they're able to compete with whoever, and even if they're at the top of the league? Well, you know, styles make fights, you know, and it's, the, it's, it's what we've tried to promote to them. Guys, we can compete with anybody and we can beat anybody, but this league is a mother. Like, this league is really, really good, and – you know, when Mark and Ish and, and Keys came in this league, we were like best, some of the best defensive teachers and defensive minds are in our conference. And, you know, to what they see when they were like, this is unbelievable. Like guys know them. people are calling out every single thing we're running. People are like, hey, go down here. You're supposed to be, you're in the wrong spot. And they're laughing about it. But that's where our league is. There's so many great technicians and statisticians in our league and knowing what to take away and what to do. Um, and it's just been, it's just, you know, it's a great league. I mean, and it, it is what it is after that for our guys, and hopefully they'll continue to build. Thank you.